Inside EKU Sports, brought to you by Jimmy John's. Order Jimmy John's sandwich delivery today. Jimmy John's, freaky fast, freaky fresh. Welcome to Inside EKU Sports, a production of EKU Athletics. Mark Elder with us to talk about the conference opener last Saturday, and later in the show, we'll look ahead to the game at home against Southeast Missouri. Mark, it was a well-played ball game. It was exciting to watch. You hate to be on the losing end of one uh, down at Tennessee Tech, but I saw a lot of good things from your team. Yeah, I, it was one of the best games I've been associated with. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't come out on the right side of it, but a uh, well-fought game by both sides. Um, it, it came down to the wire, obviously going to overtime, and and uh, you know there were some things that we certainly did better. I guess the the encouraging thing is is truthfully that was our best game, our best execution. Uh, you look at offensively things that we did. We have over 550 yards of offense. Uh, 12 explosive plays, one sack, one turnover. Uh, you want no sacks, no turnovers, but those are manageable numbers. They're not uh, things that are absolutely knifing you. Uh, defensively, 52 rushes, 119 yards, uh, which held them to 2.3 yards per carry. If you, and even if you just look at their tailbacks, they only averaged 2.3 yards per carry. Uh, that's a team that wants to run the football, so we limited, limited them running. Six sacks, 12 TFLs are some positives there, a couple explosives on – on kickoff return, a couple punts right. inside the 20. There's a, there's a lot of those things. Uh, unfortunately, where, where we lost the game is, you know, not the meat and potatoes, but really the more critical areas. The well, we lost the turnover battle, although we only had one ourselves. We didn't gain any. And whether you lose it one to nothing or four to three, whenever you're on the losing side of turnovers, that's going to hurt you. Uh, they outperformed us in the red zone. They were four for four with three touchdowns. We were two for three with one touchdown. Uh, and then third down, third and fourth, when you combine the two, they were better than us, considerably better than us, over 10% better. Um, and then the other thing, we, we improved on penalties. We had five penalties for 33 yards, which is, uh, it's again, a manageable number right there. Unfortunately, four of those five were critical. Mm -hmm. And four of those five resulted in first downs for them. So um, we executed better. There was much more positive to see out of that game than certainly what we'd seen uh, the previous game in Ball State. We just got to perform at a higher level when it comes down to the critical plays, third down red zone and, and uh, turnover margin. Let's roll the highlights out at Tucker Stadium last Saturday in Cookville. You hit one, your longest run, Jared Sanders uh, from 59 yards out, go up 6-0. Absolutely. Jared did a great job on that. It was it was schemed up well, and, and he did a tremendous job running the football here, got in open space, uh, outran the defense, which was great to see. Um, you know, that was our highlight running the football. We didn't run the football very effectively after that, but that was great to see. It's 6-0. You went for two, didn't make it. You get six quarterback sacks on the night of their really good quarterback, Michael Birdsong Graffery on this one. Yeah, he, he was tremendous. We, we did cause some pressure there. Uh, six sacks. We had him a handful of other times. Would have liked to have seen us get a couple more. He slipped out of our, our hands a couple times. Um, but I'll, I'll give hats off to him. He is a tremendous player. Really had a great game. You had stopped them uh, on three straight plays there, and they score on a fourth and one. And you mentioned that fourth down conversions, 0 for 3 for Eastern, 2 for 3 for them. But uh, your passing game, Benny Coney played all the way, had a career high night. Marcouche was one of his main targets, along with Devin Borders. Yeah, Benny did some great things. He. Um... Went out there through for 450 yards, very efficient. Uh, really did a better job of protecting the football. There's only one throw that I really looked at and said, hey, we need to do a better job with decision making, not putting it out there for where they could potentially make a play on it. Uh, his one pick, truthfully, again, he got hit as he's throwing. So I don't fault him there as much as, as I do our protection. Marcouche with a touchdown after a 28 yard uh, catch by Dan Paul. This is a 27 yard score and it's 14-13 Tech at this point. They score a field goal to go up by four. You strike long 50 yards to Cameron Fogel, but miss a field goal, we go to halftime with Tech up by four. Yeah, you know, we did a good job there at, at the end of the half moving the football. We just got to get out of bounds there so that we're stopping the clock and, and allowing us a better opportunity with a shorter field goal. Six sacks, as we said, but Bird, I mean, uh, Birdsong, their quarterback, did a good job. He broke 
uh, some yeah. potential other quarterback sacks. Yeah, he, he's big, strong. It's everything that we talked about. He's big and strong. He was able to break through some arm tackles. We had him in the backfield. Uh, had great vision throwing the football after we didn't uh, finish up on sacks, and, and he, he's tremendous. Here's Borders with a touchdown catch. He's now one away from Steve Bird on the career ladder, moving up the ladder uh, to number eight with his 17th career catch. Good job here using his height. Yeah, Devin, Devin has been doing a really good job this year. Uh, nine catches, over 100 yards, and a touchdown the other day. Really did a great job. So we are tied at 20. We're in the fourth quarter. You make a great drive here, 44 yards to Brian Green. But that fourth down play, that's the one that hurt you right there, fourth and one. Sure. We, we had on second down, we had a nine-yard gain. Ethan had a really nice run, fell just a little bit short. But we got to come up on third and one, fourth and one. We've got to be able to come up with a yard to move the chains there. You push them back, but they score here a nine-yard touchdown pass to their U of L transfer, Dantes Bird. So you're down seven. Two and a half minutes to go. Tremendous drive here. Six plays, 72 yards. Yeah, I, I will say this. that This drive right here really excited me. Um, our back was against the wall. We had to go out there and execute. We did a really nice job. Benny does a nice job throughout this whole drive. Uh, our protection held up for the most part, and the one time that it didn't, he was able to break free from the sack. Uh, we checked the ball down when we when we had to. We ran the ball for a first down on a second and one or second and two. Uh, we did what we had to do to drive the field and, and showed what we're capable of doing consistently. Uh, we just got to put that together more often. Kremens with the score from Coney. You kick a field goal in the top half of the overtime and then they score the winner right here third time these two teams have played overtime and tech at home 33 30 in overtime when we come back we'll talk with mark later in the show but up next let's talk women's golf with mike whitson that's next on inside eku sports In a world where one hungry boss... There better be food out there. You're all fired. ...could cost an entire office their jobs. Who ordered the food? And time is running out. Someone has to take the fall. Home order's on Tuesday. Today isn't Tuesday. It's not Tuesday? We're all fired! Fire. Fire. Oh. It'll take one intern and his trusted mobile app to save the day. Freaky Fast. At a Jimmy... <clears throat> at a Jimmy John's near you. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with a slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Welcome back to Inside EKU Sports. Mike Whitson joins us now. He played golf at EKU in the early 90s, now in his seventh year as the coach of the women's team. And Sorry to date you there. Uh, he, you, your team has won one and in this fall season has finished second twice, so off to a good start. Yeah, we are. We're off to a good start. We're having a lot of fun with this team. Uh, we have fun at practice, and uh, we, we've really played well. I'm really proud of the way they've played. We are a young team, um, so that makes me even more proud of the way we've some of our young players have kind of come out of the gate, and uh, it's been a good first six weeks of the season. You're ranked 56th by golf stat. Let me reel off some of the teams you're ahead of. You're one spot behind Louisville, but you're ahead of teams like Michigan, Minnesota, Indiana, Michigan State, Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas, and Virginia Tech. How are you able to do that? Well, I think it's because of our finishes and our stroke average right now mm -hmm. is uh, has a lot to do with that. Uh, we've really shot some low numbers early in the year, and uh, it all, it, I don't know what tournaments some of those teams are playing in, but uh, I think our stroke average has helped us um, with our ranking this year so far and our finishes. We've only been beaten by a couple teams so far this year. So uh, it's, it's, like I said, it's been a good year. I don't pay a lot of attention to the rankings like all coaches will probably tell you, uh, but uh, I, think the, I think our stroke average has the biggest um, factor in our, in our ranking right now. You mentioned you have a young team, but you do have a three-time all-conference player and Sophie Levin. Uh, she's helped you win two OVC championships. Uh, tell me about her as a player. 
Uh, she's a phenomenal player, one of the most fundamentally sound players uh, I've ever I've ever coached. Uh, we're going to work this winter a lot on in the weight room with her to try to get her some distance. But uh, I am thrilled with the way Sophie's playing right now, and I'm I'm so excited for her to wrap up her career over the next uh, six months uh, in good fashion. Um, she's she's just a wonderful player, works very hard, and um, like you said, she's had a great career here at EKU, and uh, I'm hoping that we can really, really get it going even more in the last six months of her career. Elsa Moberly, a uh, Somerset native, began her college career at Mississippi State, transfers back to her home state. She's been the OBC Golfer of the Week twice now. Elsa's a mm -hmm. real good addition to your team. She is, yeah. She, uh, like you said, she came here from Mississippi State. Obviously, uh, I got to know her quite a bit in the recruiting process. I was teammates with her father here, Eric. Uh, back in the mid-90s, not early 90s, but uh, uh, so I'd, I've known the family for a long time and it's been a good fit. Elsa's come in, a, again, a very hard worker. Um, and I think Elsa's having fun playing golf right now and that's helping her score well. Um, so that, that's a big part of, of, of playing good golf and I think, she's, I think she's having a lot of fun. I think she enjoys EKU and we're glad to have her here. We're glad to have her back home. When you recruit a, a player or a student athlete, what, what's the selling point about why EKU would be a good fit? Uh, EKU, every, everyone likes the size of the campus. Um, everyone likes our golf facilities. So that's a, that's a big part of it. Um, one of the, I mean, Arlington and our Colonel Golf and Learning Center is two miles from campus. That that's a big part of it. But uh, just the growth of EKU going on right now, uh, I think, is very attractive to to high school students, whether they're athletes or non-athletes. Could you fix a old guy with old clubs who can't hit a wood? It depends on the depends on the <laughs> price, but I think we'll give it a shot. <laughs> I, I I can't hit a wood. Uh, do you? How much coaching do you do during a match? I mean, do you sit back and watch, or, or uh, you were it, telling me you could actually go on the green like a caddy, right? Right. We can we can do pretty much anything but yeah. carry the clubs out there. Um, it, it, I think it depends on the day, and mm -hmm. there, there are days, and it's it's no different than coaching uh, any other sport. There are days there's more coaching involved than others, but there are days I let I sit back and let them play, and sometimes learn hard lessons. And there are days I'm very very involved. It just depends on the player themselves. I coach them as individuals, and then we had to have a team score at the end of the day. But uh, some days I'm very involved and very busy, and some days I'm, I sit back and let them play. And, and we've prepared usually very well. Um, so you, you see, you let them make their own mistakes sometimes, especially with a young team, and let them learn that way. Okay, Mike, I know the OBC championships in the spring. You, mm -hmm. you split fall spring, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll tell you good luck early on that one. I know you would love to win that again. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Uh, I've, I never put all the eggs in one basket. We're having a very good year so far, and hopefully that continues. But uh, uh, the OBC championship, to, we've won three out of the last four, and sure, we're going to give it our best effort to get four out of the last five. Okay. Hit them well. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Long and straight, as they say. <laughs> thanks for having me. Well, up next, we'll take a look at a unique competition for a team of EKU aviation students where creativity soars. There better be food out there or you're all fired. Who ordered the food? Who ordered the food? Don't shut up me, dude. Paul ordered the food. But I'm Paul and I didn't. If we don't fit in this instance, she's going to fire all of us. Someone has to take the fall. Tell them orders on Tuesday. Today is on Tuesday. Is that Tuesday? Maybe the intern ordered. There's no way someone who's been here three hours ordered the food and we've been here three years and none of us ordered the food. <laughs> Freaking fast. You're my new CEO. Don't worry, I'm not going to fire you. Jimmy Johns. Flugtag is the German word and it's Red Bull's version of flight day. Red Bull took place in Louisville, Kentucky, August 27, 2016. I had previously seen a Flugtag up in the Chicago land area on a layover. I thought it was a brilliant event. Got people excited about aviation, general aviation and, and on such. The guys, they talked about doing a world record glider, but Mathauer was all about coming up with more ideas and stuff like that. I was like, 
wearing a Star Wars shirt, I think, that day, and I came up, I was like, I'm gonna do the Millennium Falcon. And it just like went from there, just like, okay, we're doing this. Joe Marthaler asked me if I wanted to do it, and I had no clue what it was. But I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And so I went back to my dorm and I like researched it, and I saw the videos, and then I was like, oh, this is what I signed up for. Okay. And so I was like, why not do it? Like, you know, it looks cool. It'd be cool to say, like, I did the Red Bull Food Talk. I jumped off a 22-foot cliff, I guess you can call it, and went into the Ohio River. <laughs> like, you don't really get the chance to say that much. When I finally saw it built, I thought it could do exactly what it did and kind of fly like a mattress. It, you know, caught a little bit of air and just floated. Between 45 and 55 feet, I knew it was going to fly. And when you hear your fourth and you're that close to winning, it was just kind of like, man, y'all really should have just given us a couple more points so we could have beat those guys. If there was ever a chance of it coming back, I would definitely do it again. Highlight of college for sure. If I had any chance to go any, honestly anywhere in the U.S. to do Red Bull again, I would, I would be all for it. And a heartbeat. I'm very proud of EKU Aviation. Very proud. It's a maroon out at Roy Kidd Stadium on Saturday night for the conference home opener. And it will be Southeast Missouri coming off a huge win over nationally ranked Eastern Illinois. They're currently at the top of the conference at 2-0, and so a good challenge for you. Absolutely. They're a very good team. Uh, I'm friends with Took, their head coach, and, and he's a really good coach. He does a great job. He's building that program up. Uh, they're 2-0. and They're in the driver's seat. They've looked really good in, in um, really every game this year. They've played very well. And uh, it's a very talented team, a very well-coached team, uh, present a lot of problems for you in, in all three phases of football, really. Uh, offensively, they, they like to shift in motion and try to uh, make it difficult for you to, to line up and be sound. Uh, they like to run the football and, and suck you in and then hit you with play action passes. They've got uh, a couple really big receivers that are that are outstanding players. You can throw the ball up in the air and they can go make plays. Uh, they got a guy that a year ago is an all-conference running back, a, a little guy that he's bouncing back and forth right now between um, flexing out some and playing in the backfield. So uh, they really are a good team offensively and, and present problems for you. Uh, defensively, again, they're very multiple, mm -hmm. and they are big up front. I mean, they are they got two guys that are over 300 pounds that are very difficult to move, uh, present you a lot of problems with multiple fronts, multiple coverages. Uh, they've got a linebacker that's that's a, a couple linebackers that are really good football players uh, out there. They got a couple DBs that can that can play man coverage and and really lock you down. Uh, so it's going to be a big challenge. And they do a lot of good things on special teams. They they come after you with punt at times that um, present some problems. They're, they're very sound in all aspects of special teams, and, and it's obviously that they put a, a great focus on that. So it's going to be a great challenge, um, and, and very excited for the matchup at home. Chad Meredith, uh, their linebacker who's out of Louisville, was the OBC Defensive Player of the Week. What caught your eye of all the things they did well in a low-scoring 21-14 win over Eastern Illinois. What what was the the signal that went off that you really have to deal with? Well, they they just play good football. I mean, that's what at the end of the day, what they are, uh, their offensive stats are not going to be astronomical. They're very sound with what they do. Uh, they want to establish the run, um, then hit you on play action passes. They protect the football very, very well. The quarterback um, makes great decisions. He has seven touchdowns, one interception. He does not put the ball in jeopardy. Uh, they play Really good defense, which I know is Tuke's specialty. He's, uh, he's a defensive guy. Uh, they play really good defense. And so they, they play into their defense's hands in that regard. Uh, they're outstanding in, in two areas that we just talked about a second ago. They're, they're playing the best red zone defense in the conference. And, and I look at red zone defense a little different than what the NCAA stats are. It's, it's your touchdown percent that matters. It's not your scoring percent. It's your right. touchdown percent that matters. And they are – 
head and shoulders above everybody else in the conference. If I remember right, they're giving up uh, 40% touchdowns, and wow. then the next closest is 60-something. Right. Uh, so they're really good in red zone defense. They're really good on third down defense. And at the end of the day, those two areas, that's when you're saying you're talking about third down getting off the field. Red zone, the difference between touchdowns and field goals, and, and they're at the top of the conference in both categories. And, and so that's where they present a lot of problems. It is, by the way, EKU tackles cancer game, and they'll be raising with pink in the uniform somewhere. Wait, Saturday night, they'll be raising money for the American Cancer Society. If you're at the stadium, you can donate as well. Uh, let's go tackle the Red Hawks on Saturday. I know it's a big game. You, your team's right in the thick of it. We just got to respond. Absolutely, and the guys have had a, a really positive attitude thus far. Uh, we, we went through all the, the positives and negatives of the game. We see what we need to correct. The guys have been very enthusiastic, very locked in so far, uh, ready for a great week of preparation, and, and can't wait for the game at home. All right, thanks, Mark. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Todd. We hope to see you at Roy Kidd Stadium this Saturday as the Colonels take on the Red Hawks. 6 p.m. kickoff. Catch the live broadcast on WCYO 100.7 on the internet at EKUsports.com or on the OBC digital network. And we invite you to keep up with EKU Sports all season long on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thanks for joining us for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. Inside EKU Sports, brought to you by Jimmy John's. Order Jimmy John's sandwich delivery today. Jimmy John's, freaky fast, freaky fresh.